because uh, I specifically like the fact that he's relating this to where we are today. Sometimes it's, it seems like we're in a vacuum, not realizing how stretched people are right now. We are in a time of joblessness, people worried about uh, keeping their jobs or worried about having lost their jobs, where are they going to get their health care? You've got seniors who are stretched because uh, they're not able to earn anything that would help them very much. Uh, we're in a distressed time in this country. Look, there's no doubt about it. And to talk about cutting Medicare, $500 billion is just astounding. Now, I'm concerned about hospitals because uh, we talked for the last 45 minutes about the cuts to services, the hearing aids, the dental work that seniors need, uh, the eye care that seniors need. We've talked about the cuts to benefits, but what about the cuts to treatment in a hospital? Every hospital in Texas treats people who have no insurance and therefore get dispro payments that make up for the low reimbursement rates of Medicare. And Medicare senior service are a major component of these lessened payments to the providers, to doctors, but also to hospitals, to hospices, to nursing homes, Medicare Advantage, we talked about, that's a cut of $120 billion. And then home health agencies, all of these serve our seniors in such great ways. And look at the cuts, half a trillion dollars over 10 years. This is not sustainable. You cannot take away from Medicare, cut services, cut the reimbursement to providers because what's going to happen to a hospital? What's going to happen to a hospital in a rural area, especially, that is barely hanging on right now because they're trying to make ends meet in a more expensive treatment area, and they lose this added benefit, this added payment, it's not a benefit, it's a payment that would make them whole in the treatment of our seniors our low-income seniors, and our seniors. The Texas Hospital Association estimates that $2 billion will be cut in the payments to hospitals for Medicare patients. Now, $2 billion out of our economy, 254 counties in Texas, more than one-fourth do not even have an acute care hospital within their boundaries. With these kinds of cuts to our rural hospitals, we are talking about losing more hospitals. There's no doubt about it because they're already struggling. Why would we pay for health care reform on the backs of our senior citizens? Why would we take away the program that they have that is tailored for their needs in order to pay for another big government program that is going to cost $2.5 trillion? <laughs> $2.5 <laughs> trillion, most of which is going to be added to the deficit, added to the, to the debt in our country, and we're already hitting the ceiling of the debt at $12 trillion. We're in a very tough financial time. We are in a time that is uh, hard for people who've lost their jobs, hard for seniors who are stretched to make ends meet, hard for hospitals that are serving these seniors and not getting paid the full cost of the treatment, and yet we're talking about cutting these services. Of the $135 billion in cuts in Medicare, $20 billion are for the reimbursement rates that will no longer be making hospitals whole. I've talked to, uh, in fact, I uh, went to the major medical centers in Texas, in Dallas, in Houston, and then I went out to rural areas, and it is the topic of conversation. Anyone who is uh, dealing with a hospital in a rural area, they're all saying, what are you doing? Well, of course, we're not doing anything. We're fighting these health care cuts, but we've got 
to make sure they know what is happening here so we can achieve that result. And Mr. President, I understand that my time is up and I think the Senator from Oklahoma uh, has the rest of the time on our side and I yield to him. Thank you. Senator from Oklahoma. First of all, I thank the uh, 